Welcome back guys to the reviews and I know it's been a long time but today I'm going to be reviewing the Cylon 4 by Aerocool. Like I say this is the Cylon 4 by Aerocool and this has been sent over to me by Aerocool so a massive thank you to them. Um, I previously used this in a build in their new Hive case which you can see up there somewhere. Uh, so you want to check that out and see what it's like. Um, now all my testing is going to be done using that case, so the figures I have from that from that build are going to be used here. Now let's talk about the first thing. So the price of this at the moment can be roughly had for around 30 uh, British pounds, so probably $35, something like that in the US. Um, maybe $30, I don't know to be honest with you, um, but I will look into that. Um, now this is a single tower cooler from Aerocool and it comes with an included ARGB fan which is a 3 pin 5 volt so it can connect directly to your motherboard so if you've got uh, Gigabyte Fusion, MSI Mystic Lite, uh, Asus or a Sync that type of thing you can connect it directly to your motherboard and control it using that for the uh, for the lighting effects. Um, the fan that's on it is a PWM fan so you can control the speed of it via your motherboard as well which is nice to see and this uh, this cooler includes four times six millimeters heat pipes to spread that heat out and get rid of it from the fins which are all aluminium fins and this cooler comes with a rated TDP of 145 watts so should be good for most CPUs at the moment um, I believe the Ryzen 9s are like 105 watts so you should have no problem with this at all this cooler also features what they call heat core touch technology which is the four heat pipes and the way that they touch onto the CPU to provide better heat dissipation uh, for your CPU as it gets hot. The fins on it are coated in uh, black paint so they actually look really good, they're not going to stick out like a normal aluminium fins which are all silver and actually going to fit into most budget, uh, into most builds um, with the black theme. Uh, obviously black goes with, with anything really so no matter what theme you've got um, this cooler should fit in nicely. And this cooler also comes with a unidirectional flow uh, port on top of it and to enable a better heat dissipation as well from the top of the cooler as well as out the sides. Now in terms of installation this cooler is really really easy to install. Um, it's pretty much standard now um, and once you've got it installed you remove the fan before you put it in um, so you can get it on nicely and secure it down and then the fan just literally slides on which is nice to see. It's a little bit like the Corsair one where the fans can slide up and down. Um, so you can move this one about as well if you needed to, um, to account, uh, take into account for different uh, RAM uh, sizes. However, this one gets nowhere near my RAM, so I can't imagine that's going to be an issue at all. Right, now let's talk about testing. So for testing this, I've not really got any CPU coolers to test against it other than a Be Quiet Dock Rock 4, which a bit, I think is a little bit unfair to test against this. And also the results I've got from that were used in a massive Corsair 780T case. Uh, which had probably double if not triple the amount of fans that this case has so I believe the testing is a little bit unfair and I don't have any of the other coolers that I used previously um, my liquid cooler broke and the other coolers I borrowed off other people to test and uh, give a sort of comparison between the two so at the moment I'm just going to show you the results I got just with this cooler um, as you, you might have already seen these in the Hive video but this is obviously just about the cooler today um, so I'm literally going to show you that so you can see sort of what you can get um, obviously go back to my other videos for the Dark Rock 4 and have a look and see what the potentials were there um, but obviously take that with a pinch of salt because those were used in a different case and obviously the Dark Rock 4 is a lot more money, it's more than double the price normally um, so you're going to expect a higher quality of cooler. Uh, this is a budget focus cooler um, so for £30 you, you're getting a, a decent deal with these really. Um, so the ambient temperature that, that was in the room at the time of testing was around 21 degrees um, so take that into account in terms of comparing the results I'll put, that, I'll put the over, to, over ambient temperatures on all the graphs anyway so you can see um, now the result from 3 d Mark Time Spy um, I got an average of 48 degrees um, on the average of, of, over the run of that um, which is pretty decent to be fair, I can't complain at all. Um, this was with the CPU clocks at only 4.5 um, but that was all core um, so, and obviously I ran at 1080p to give you um, to put more load onto the CPU to heat it up more and give give it stress test the, the cooler a little bit more. Uh, then we went on to superposition from Unigen and I got an average of 47, again a decent result, Not I can't complain with that at all, um, no throttling whatsoever, um, kept the 
the CPU in check in terms of temperature so absolutely no issues whatsoever with that. Uh, then we went on to a CPU only test and used the Blender BMW render um, obviously this is more of a stress test this does put a lot more load onto the CPU than um, than 3D Mark and things like that uh, and we got an average of 78 degrees over the whole run now be being a 7700K obviously it takes my, my CPU a long time to do this so um, that is quite a, an extended run uh, and got 78 degrees on average overall which again isn't bad whatsoever uh, and then the last one I did was uh, Cinebench um, and we got 66 degrees average on that one and again this is another test that takes a while for the 7700K um, to to complete so it does get stressed pretty much uh, quite a lot should I say um, so there we go uh, in terms of cooling performance it performed pretty well to be fair um, for 30 pounds you get an ARGB fan um, it's nicely coated in black so it's not going to stick out in, in people's builds uh, like some of the silver ones do um, it just looks really good to be fair um, as you can probably see from the pictures um, nice ARGB colours, it's got it on the fan, it also goes over the top of the like sh fan shroud if you will um, and it just makes it look really good and again obviously can work with your motherboard uh, if you've got an aerial controller it can work with that as well which is what I'm using at the moment um, so there we go, um, I will be doing more tests on this hopefully in the future um, I'm going to get a open uh, test bench uh, and therefore I can give you a better overall result between different coolers I'm going to get some more in uh, and I'll, I'll test them across a range and give sort of an overall video um, of the best budget coolers at some point in time however as most people know it's hard to get hold of upgrade stuff at the moment so I'm after a, an AMD 5000 CPU and I can't get one anywhere so at the moment I'm stuck with my 7700K which this is going to become the test bench in the future but anyway guys I hope you liked that uh, video I hope you enjoyed seeing about the Cylon 4 and what it can do um, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to where you can buy it. I'll also leave you a link to Ericle's website. You can read more about it as well if you need to. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.